The final item of business is members' business debate on motion 15052 in the name of Gail Ross on Highland Youth Survey. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Gail Ross to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. And I'd also like to start by thanking colleagues for signing my motion and for those that are going to speak in the debate tonight. Communities in the Highlands and Islands have for a long time tried to find solutions to the challenge of depopulation. The loss of our young people has been sorely felt, especially school leavers when lured by the bright lights of the city. Of course, we should never tell young people that they can't follow their dreams. That should be positively encouraged. What we do need to do is make sure that the Highlands and Islands are an attractive place to live, work and study, somewhere for people to come home to. Although retaining our young people has been difficult in the past, new strategies offering the conditions they need to thrive in the Highlands and Islands are starting to have effect. In November, Highlands and Islands Enterprise published the results of their latest survey, Young People in the Highlands and Islands Maximising Opportunity. And this study had two main aims. And from the document itself, it says to provide an overview of the evolving attitudes and aspirations of young people in the Highlands and Islands, how these have changed since 2015, and to identify gaps within the current provision of education, training and employment, and consider how opportunities can be maximised for young people. The population of the Highlands and Islands was approximately 470,000 in 2016, according to the study. However, those aged 15 to 30 only comprise 17% of the population, compared to 21% across Scotland as a whole. This deficit is mostly acutely felt in the Outer Hebrides, Loch Aber, Skye, Wester Ross, Argyll and our islands. Mm. Presiding officer, the first stat that jumps out of the report tells us that 55% of young people are committed to staying in the region. This is up from 43% in 2015. There is also evidence of an increase in potential returners, those with an interest in and attraction to living in the region that are from the Highlands and Islands but living elsewhere. 69% of those that do stay feel that they are lucky to be able to work or study locally. This is up from 62% in 2015. 60% of young people think that the Highlands and Islands has a good educational offering. This is up from 56% in 2015. And there is now less of a perception that the young people that stay lack ambition due to the range of further and higher education available. There is no doubt that the University of the Highlands and Islands is having a positive effect on keeping our young people in the area and attracting young people from throughout the UK and the world to study and stay in our area. North Highland College, which is a partner in the UHI, is one of Scotland's top colleges for positive student destinations boasting rates of 90%, a statistic which I know everyone involved is extremely proud of. And to add to that, North Highland College and West Highland College student leavers have the highest progression rates into work at 40%, well above the national average. This is North Highland College's third year of delivering foundation apprenticeships, a very welcome endeavour supported by the European Social Fund and enjoyed by young people who've taken the opportunity to learn this way throughout the area. And this year, the subjects that young people can study have been increased by introducing business skills, IT, hardware and system support, and engineering is awaiting approval. And these new subjects send a powerful message to young people that the Highlands are not only open for business, we are open for innovation and success too. And at this point, I would like to draw the Chamber's attention to my register of interest as an advisor to the Board of North Highland College. Presiding Officer, 87% of young people are proud to be associated with their community. And this is up from 78% in 2015. 64% want to work in the region, up from 44%. I mentioned foundation apprenticeships before, and there is no doubt that the Developing the Young Workforce initiative has been pivotal in pulling together schools, colleges and the public and private sector and encourage them to work together in a way that they never did before. The Caithness and Sutherland Group is facilitated by Caithness Chamber of Commerce 
and has provided a wide range of employment and career development activities and support, which has been given and led to an increased number of work placements, employability workshops and events, employer-led mock interviews and STEM opportunities. And the development of STEM has been further boosted through support from the Highland City Region deal. This is £315 million worth of funding, consisting of £135 million from the Scottish Government, £127 million from the Highland Council and its partners, and £53 million from the UK Government. And these are good stats, President Officer, but just like real life, not everything goes up and not everything is good news. So for balance, the numbers participating in their communities is down by 9%. And that statistic surprised me because I attended a Youth Volunteer Awards ceremony in WIC in November and there were loads of young people there, all active in the community, all extremely proud to be receiving their awards. And I know that our islands also have a strong cohort of young volunteers, having met some of them in the parliament last year. Another 38% say a lack of local opportunities is a barrier to achieving employment goals. And while 71% were happy with the choice of subjects they can study, 46% felt that the range of subjects available will limit their post-school options. And this rises to 63% in fragile areas. Now, there is no doubt that there can be issues with school subject choices in rural areas. And one of the main barriers to that is teacher recruitment. I raised the subject of probationary teachers being allocated earlier in the school year to allow more flexibility with subject choices and timetables, and the Education Secretary assured me that this was something he would look into. Half of young people agree that their community is a place where it's okay to be different, and this is the same as 2015. However, research by LGBT Youth Scotland shows that in rural areas, 81% of LGBT young people experience at least one form of bullying in education, and that 9% of lesbian, gay or bisexual, and 27% of transgender young people left education because of this. And this is only one of the reasons that an inclusive approach to education is even more important in the Highlands and Islands. Presiding officer, in conclusion, this is a welcome report that shows more and more young people are realising and taking advantages, advantage of the opportunities offered to them to enable them to live, study and work in the Highlands and Islands. We've always had an issue with depopulation, but we should never completely halt this outward migration and neither should we seek to. They will always want to broaden their horizons, whether that's in other parts of Scotland or other parts of the world. But what this study shows is that we are empowering young people with more choice and the days of being forced away from your community because there are fewer prospects of studying and employment are becoming a thing of the past. But we need to build on this work, ensure that these figures continue to rise, especially in our fragile communities, in areas such as provision and access to opportunities, education, training, and engagement with arts, leisure, and culture activities. We also need to make sure that there's adequate housing for those who choose to stay or want to come back. Two or three new houses could make a huge difference in places such as Loch Carran, Kinloch Burvey or Apple Cross. And I will leave you with a quote from the report. The Highlands and Islands is such a wonderful place and I always love telling people that that is where I am from. Me too. Thank you. We move to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes, please. Jamie Halcrow-Johnson, followed by Rhoda Grant. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I welcome this debate and uh, congratulate Gail Ross on bringing it to the Chamber. Um, as a Highlands and Islands MSP, I'm perhaps biased. Uh, I think our region is one of the most diverse, most beautiful and friendliest in Scotland. The region has drawn many in, charmed by our landscape and sense of community, and it is undoubtedly a spectacular place to live. And it's certainly not without its challenges, nor are they new. For generations, many people born in the Highlands and Islands have looked further afield for opportunities. They have felt that they cannot continue their education or progress in their chosen career and remain in the land where they were born and raised. There is undoubtedly a sense of this in rural communities across our country. Young people will often move away for, away for university or work. What cannot be denied is the extent to which this is more pronounced in the Highlands and Islands. As High Survey indicates, people aged 15 to 30 are 17% of the population of our re region, as opposed to 21% across Scotland as a whole. There is a divide here too. In some of the Western Isles and West Highlands, the figure is even lower yet. 
One of the most pronounced impacts of rural living early uh, on in a person's life is education. The impact of subject choice is significant. Even where we see innovation, such as the extension of foundation apprenticeships, we still see choice narrow in more remote communities. Some may suggest that this is natural, that it is a con consequence of the choice to live in rural communities. It is simply what you would expect where a low, lower density of population exists. And this certainly uh, be, will be true in some aspects of life. But there's also a stronger theory that government exists to expand opportunity, to share prosperity, and to provide services that are similar across its population. As far back as we can reason, uh, reasonably analyze, Scotland has always had a higher public spending than the UK average. Today we see that delivered through the Barnett formula. The chief justification for that disparity is, what, is that we do have these geographical and demographic challenges. Where we might ask, is that additional expenditure going, if not on creating a level playing field in public services within Scotland itself? And there will always be a pull to a local community, being close to friends and family, the, the sense of home. For many, that pull will not be loosened by the odd difficulty. However, for these communities, the challenges of staying can be overwhelming. As a young person leaves school and looks to their future, they might be able to accept a narrower level of choice in their education. But they might consider other possibilities too. Can they get public transport to college, university or training? Can they be sure that they'll be able to pick up a part-time job to supplement their income? These are areas where government can take a greater lead. Preferably government at a local level, government that is respons uh, responsive to the particular needs of remote and rural communities. My party has often pushed for localism. Decentralization will be part of any solution, and yet our established organs of local government are struggling more than ever. I mentioned foundation apprenticeships, but I should also touch on some of the opportunities pre presented by graduate apprenticeships too. We should also consider how other elements of our education structures, like articulation from college to university, can be valuable in our region. If we can properly adapt these educational routes to our, uh, to our difficult geography, then not only are we increasing life chances, but also providing a route for those re reluctant leavers to stay. These are just a few of the areas that could be mentioned. We could look at infrastructure from roads to broadband or the need to encourage uh, entrepreneurship. I don't feel that these approaches are not understood by policymakers. They are. However, choices are made or not made, and change can be glacial. The challenges of not making progress are stark. The future of young people in the highlands and islands is the future of our economy, of our public services, and of the opportunities for generations to come. Rhoda Grant, followed by Jenny Gilruth. Thank you, presiding officer. I would like to congratulate Gail Ross on bringing forward this debate. And I'd also like to express my support to Highlands and Islands Enterprise for surveying young people. Um, this is the, the benefit of having an enterprise company that has a social as well as an economic remit. It's heartening to know that so many young people want to live and work in the Highlands and Islands. And that said, I'm not against people spreading their wings and seeing a bit of the world. The Highlands and Islands are famous for sending people around the globe. But unfortunately, much of this outward migration was and is not choice, but due to a lack of education and career opportunities in the region. And we need to make sure that the decision to stay or leave is a real choice, enabling people to stay without compromising their life chances and career. Gail Ross said that one of the biggest developments um, that has stemmed uh, outward migration is the development of University of the Highlands and Islands. It offers excellence in many of its institutions, and she spoke about North Highland College, but there are many others as well, um, because they provide normal courses that you would expect in a further education college, but also there is the excellence that comes from a higher education facility. And it's often the combination of both that provides opportunities that are not available in other institutions. However, it's still the case that young people have to move away when their chosen course is not available locally. Otherwise, they're forced to compromise, which is shown clearly by the st statistics that show lower educational qualifications in those that opt to stay compared with the national figures for qualifications. And these figures also disguise movement within the area with people having to move a distance from home just to access further and higher education. 
and this leads to internal migration by young people to the more urban areas within the Highlands and Islands. The study also showed that young people wanted to stay in the more fragile areas due to the stronger sense of community, but again were less likely to be able to do that for career and educational reasons. And a recent study in the US showed that more young people were either returning or joining the community there. And there was an increase in children in the primary schools because of this. And this trend is due to a number of reasons, but what is crucially important to young people is work, housing and access to services. If we can provide that, we can halt depopulation and bring new life to the communities that would otherwise be dying. Another issue that Gail Ross touched on in her speech is the issue of diversity. Um, the LGBT Youth Scotland 2017 survey showed that young LGBT people living in rural areas were more likely to have poor mental health because of fewer safe spaces for socialising. And Gail, talked about, Gail Ross talked about bullying, and that is totally unacceptable. While rural areas can be the best places in the world to live, no one is anonymous. It makes coming out difficult because you cannot do that gradually due to the lack of privacy. And this lack of privacy makes it difficult for people with poor mental health to seek help when there is an added, when added to that there is the per perception and stigma. Therefore, these communities can be the most supportive. Everyone knows everyone else so that you, can, you are less likely to be looked upon as a one-dimensional person, but for all your attributes. However, we all instinctively want to conform and not stand out from the crowd. So anything that appears to make you stand out can be much more difficult to deal with. The Highlands and Islands is a wonderful place to live. And while I had to move for all the reasons highlighted um, where I stayed um, when I was a child, my first home will always be home to me. I never chose to leave and I don't want any other young person to be forced to make that choice. Jenny Gilruth, followed by John Finney. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating my colleague and friend, Gail Ross, MSP, on securing this evening's uh, members' debate. Uh, today's motion is focused on the Highlands, so I would like to begin by declaring an interest as a proud descendant of a Highlander. Uh, my granny, Flora McRae, was the daughter of a crofter, and my great-granddad, Donald, was also the postman for Muir of Ward and Muir of Taradale, where the family croft was and still stands today. But for my granny and for so many of her generation, leaving the Highlands was almost a necessity. Indeed, the depopulation of that part of the country is remembered as one of the saddest times in our country's history. That's why the Highland Youth Survey is important, because it tells us the story of the next generation's ambitions and aspirations for Highland Scotland. Gail Ross's motion today rightly points to the important part that young people play in supporting thriving communities. And indeed, 70% of participants in the survey considered that those who stayed in the Highlands were lucky to be able to work or study locally. I think that speaks volumes about the opportunities now present for young people in the Highlands. Members will remember that last year marked the Year of Young People, which focused on inspiring the country through our young people, celebrating their achievements, uh, valuing their contributions to communities and on creating new opportunities for the generations yet to come. And whilst there is no direct Fife equivalent, uh, the Scottish Government commissioned Young People in Scotland survey asked a number of questions to young people about their ability to make their views heard and on decisions that affect their lives. And when asked about um, adults in general, over half of young people surveyed agreed that adults were good at listening to their views and that adults were good at taking their views into account when uh, taking decisions that affected them. Young people need to have their views listened to, but they also need to be part of that decision making process. The Highland Youth Survey is therefore encouraging as it shows that increasing numbers of young people want to live and work in the Highlands and Islands, with the proportion of committed stairs increasing from 36% to uh, from 36% in 2015. Depopulation, however, is not limited to the Highlands. And this week I've been lucky enough to be shadowed by an S6 pupil, Jennifer Smith, from Ochmuty High School in Glenrothes. Ahead of today's debate, I asked if she would stay in Fife when she finishes school this summer. And she told me, when I leave school, I want to go to Edinburgh to live and study and then maybe to London and maybe one day I'll come home to Fife. Now, I completely understand Jennifer's motivations for doing so. I also grew up in Fife and I left to go to the big smoke in Glasgow. Gail Ross did likewise. 
So we do need to balance the needs of our rural communities like the Highlands and like Fife with the needs of young people to explore our cities and to experience different places. We should not place a limitation on their ambitions, but rather seek to uh, focus to empower our young people to have a real voice in decision making from the outset. Whether that's through the school council or modern studies, 2019 is no longer the year of young people and perhaps last year's real test will be whether or not we continue to engage young people in our work as parliamentarians. The Highland Youth Survey is certainly an invaluable tool for measuring societal shifts in that part of Scotland. And reflecting the shift and responding to the survey in the Press and Journal, uh, historian Jim Hunter wrote about his experiences of growing up in the Highlands last month. He said, so prevalent was the conviction that success could only be achieved elsewhere, that someone still at home when in their early 20s was likely to be seen as, by definition, a failure. Now contrast his view with the young person that Gail Ross quoted earlier, who said, the Highlands and Islands is such a wonderful place and I always love telling people that is where I'm from. For Jim Hunter, what's made the difference is what he describes as a transformation in the attitudes in young people uh, is the work done by the Highlands and Islands Enterprise through the backing of successive governments. So, presiding officer, perhaps today I should really be calling for a Kingdom of Fife enterprise. But on a serious note to the Minister, the Highland Youth Survey provides us with invaluable information uh, to measure attitude shift. And with that in mind, I will now be writing to Fife Council to ask if we can seek to learn from the survey by listening to the views of young people across the Kingdom. Thank you. I call John Finney to be followed by Donald Cameron. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Like others, can I start by thanking Gail Ross for bringing this debate? I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting debate and, and, and congratulate her on bringing it here. And an early declaration as a, a man lured by the bright lights of Fort William. Um, <laughs> many years ago, I, I, um, I, I, I've spent all but a handful of years living, um, born and bred in the Highlands and living there. Um, and uh, so I'm delighted that one of the early findings is that there's an increased number of young people who are committed to staying in the Highlands. Um, but I also absolutely go along with everyone who said, um, you, you know, let's not be uh, negative about people who leave. I think it's very important that we have a rich mix. And part of that rich mix comes about because people do leave. And after all, it's many people from the Highlands Islands have gone throughout the, 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 this planet uh, doing lots of good things, often returning or often continuing to, to contribute there. And I want to talk about something that's if a, perhaps a small negative of the report. I was disappointed not to, to find that there was no mention of Brexit and there was no mention of Europe. Because part of that rich mix and the big change in my time uh, in the Highlands is the number of, of people from all sorts of different cultures who are contributing to making it the vibrant place it is now. So I think Brexit looms over everything. And you know, the Erasmus programme and uh, Dr. Winifred Ewing, when she was the MEP, that was instrumental in bringing that in and the benefits there's been from that. And the, the reality is that uh, as things stand, uh, there's the potential that people are, are going to be denied some of these opportunities. So the comparator for this um, a survey was the period 2015, the previous survey, to, to now. And, and I think the change is there are the raw statistics. Um, and I've just remembered another very minor negative, because whilst I'm very happy to go along with uh, um, uh, my colleague Gail Rox's comment about uh, the Northern Innovation Hub and the Science Skills Academy, it does disappoint me that £119 million, pounds, which could be doing something very constructive, is going to construct roads in the Inverness area. Um, roads that are going to take people 12 seconds between locations at peak time. So um, things are about priorities, and the priorities for a lot of people will be to, to understand the needs in any community. I think the comments about youth participation, I think it's very heartening the level of participation there, are, there is. I think it's very important that there's more um, parliamentarians that look like Gail Ross and less that look like John Finney. I think there are far too many men in suits, and that is the very position that puts people off. So I think things are changing, and they are changing for the better. Um, I thought it was significant the outward migration was particularly concentrated in the 15 to 19 group. And uh, on the question of education, which has been repeated, um, and, and indeed um, my colleague Gail Ross was with me and Rhoda Grant as well, um, when we visited Eastall, um, the, the the, the, it was an important development in the Outer Hebrides, which caters for remote learning. And I think significantly the opportunity uh, to use uh, video technology to allow teachers to deliver classes from their homes now, when we were there, I think uh, it was uh, um, local authorities in the northeast of Scotland which, for which some of the services were being provided. So we need to embrace the technology. The whole collegiate system of UHI, which has been a great boost, was that um, small groups of people together 
who by their very nature are going to be still in the communities um, are, are contributing to the whole. Um, so I, I think that's an opportunity. Um, many rich cultures in the Highlands, the North culture in the North, I, I think developments with the Gaelic um, and particularly in, in Skye and a situation where in my day, Gaelic was something that was done at Cayley's by largely old people. And now the innovation where there are people making very good livelihoods as a result of taking Highlands and Islands culture throughout this planet. And that has brought young people to it. So I think there's a very lot to be positive about. And I thank you all for bringing the motion. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Donald Cameron. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'm delighted to follow John Finney, who, of course, spent some of his childhood in my local village. Um, and as he's one of our younger MSPs, I hope he too uh, may one day return home uh, at some point. Um, I'd like to thank Gail Ross for bringing this issue to debate this evening. I feel it's been a very worthwhile um, discussion. Um, in what I think has been a start to this year, which we've seen a lot of pessimism and negativity for all sorts of reasons, it's very pleasing to take part in such a positive debate. And as a Highlands Alliance MSP, like others, I'm all too aware of the issue of depopulation and its major impact on rural and remote communities. And just taking a few statistics from the HIE report, um, the report says that in the 15 to 30 age group, 17% um, to 17% uh, of, of that population age group, um, are, um, there is a deficit uh, compared to 21% in Scotland as a whole. And that, the report also says that the population in the Highlands and Islands is predicted to be stable to 2041, uh, but the 15 to 30 age group is expected, nevertheless, to decrease uh, by 15%, which is a significant number. Um, in Argyll and Butte, for example, there's long been a prediction that there'll be a decline in the working age population uh, of more than a third. And likewise, in the Western Isles, uh, they estimated that their working age population would decline by 27%. So um, there is, I think, a real problem. Uh, and it's not just a recent phenomenon. The history of the Highlands and Islands in the last 250 years is one, I think, which tells of more people leaving than arriving. However, with all that said, it's abundantly clear that there are many signs of improving attitudes to living in the Highlands and Islands and that more young people see a future for themselves in the region. And that is something that we all rightly welcome. Um, I think one speaker spoke, I think it was Rhoda Grant, spoke about the Uists. Um, because last year uh, there was a report that highlighted that unlike other island communities, th uh, the US appeared to be bucking the trend, uh, and there's a birth rate rise of 67% in the last decade, which is um, uh, very marked. There was an article in the Herald last year which described that and about how what they called young returners um, were helping to reverse the depopulation trend. And there was a new generation of young people who are keen to lay down their roots in, in, their community, in these communities. Um, and many of the reasons cited were, were things such as a feeling of greater safety for bringing up a family, the landscape, the untapped market for business uh, enterprises. Uh, and it's clear, I think, from the, the report, the HIA report, that there are many more opportunities for young people than even just a few years ago. And the report notes that the um, Inverness and Highland uh, City deal is clearly going to have an impact. Um, it mentions projects such as the Northern Innovation Hub uh, and other rural growth deals uh, especially, and um, other speakers, including John Finney, mentioned East School, which I visited in Stornoway last year, uh, using technology um, to enable, um, in, in this instance, school children, but um, could easily be extended um, to other, um, in, in other areas. And there's been investment from STEM industries in the region, which I think also gives hope to more long-term uh, economic um, regeneration. Um, long-standing businesses and organizations have committed to a long-term future in the region, and, We've had a BASF farmer in Kalanish in, in Lewis and MG Alaba in Stornoway will ensure that there remains a demand for skilled jobs in the area. And one thing that struck me, uh, particularly from the HIA report, was the fact that 87% uh, of young people think that although life in the Highlands requires making compromises, um, and, we, and we, accept as, uh, we accept that to be true, that um, they still believe that there are growing opportunities for young people. Now, Lastly, I was very struck by Gerald's comment about housing because I think that is absolutely right to recognise that this is a, an issue. And likewise, we, there are issues with ferry connections. All the issues that we know and talk about, those of us who represent the Highlands Islands, uh, poor roads, broadband, etc. But all that said, there is so much impetus for young people to stay and work in the region. And um, I, I, you know, I'm delighted to, um, 
take part in this debate. Because if we do get it right now and ensure that um, we continue the economic regeneration in the Highlands and Islands, then it will only serve to encourage more young people uh, to live and work and, and make their life there. Thank you. I now invite Jamie Hepburn to respond to the debate for around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, uh, President Officer. Can I join with others in thanking Gail Ross for uh, bringing forward her, her motion for debate uh, this evening? Thank members for their uh, contributions, as uh, Donald Cameron uh, sent, set out. It is uh, quite welcome to be able to take part in a, a positive uh, debate. It is fantastic to see uh, progress in supporting more uh, young people to live uh, and work in the Highlands and, and Islands, and also to see uh, they've changed attitudes in terms of their uh, desire uh, to do so. Jamie Halcrow Johnson uh, said he uh, might be biased in celebrating the area he represents. He, of course, shouldn't be because it is uh, an outstanding uh, part of the world. And again, that's demonstrated by the, the trends we debate uh, this, this evening, which, of course, is very welcome. Uh, Jenny Gilruth uh, and others placed this debate in its uh, proper historic uh, context. Like Jenny Gilruth, most of us in other parts of Scotland will have some a part of our historic family experience rooted in the depopulation of uh, the Highlands uh, and Islands. So it is welcome to see uh, that situation uh, turning uh, around. I I'll uh, place a lot of my uh, comments this evening, uh, President Officer, in the context of developing young workforce, which uh, Gail Ross' motion uh, mentions, because that is, I believe, making uh, a positive difference. I believe making a positive difference the length and breadth of the country, but certainly in the Highlands and Islands. But before I, I turn to that, I want to to talk about the role of uh, Highlands and Islands Enterprise. Uh, clearly, they've had a role in relation to the very welcome report that they have uh, pulled together. We should thank them for uh, that uh, work. But they also are uh, uh, integral uh, in terms of creating the, the right conditions for the Highlands and Islands to uh, thrive. They've been involved in uh, supporting the right conditions for Scotland's employers and their progress uh, in implementing the, uh, the city region deal delivering projects such as the Northern Innovation Hub and the Science Skills Academy. So we should uh, commend the work of HIE and of course the role of uh, UHI in creating opportunities for young people in uh, the area, the region and acting as a hub for research and innovation. The Scottish Government of course is also committed to improving outcomes for those who live in the Highlands and Islands. That's why we are investing £135 million over 10 years through the Inverness City Region deal, the uh, deal sets out our investment of £135 million, uh, further uh, £53 million by the UK government and £127 million from Highland Council and other regional partners, representing uh, some £300 million of investment in the region over uh, 10 years, delivering uh, a step change in transport, innovation, digital connectivity, housing skills, infrastructure uh, and tourism, improving the lives of many uh, living working and visiting the Highlands and, Highlands and being able to further uh, the trends that we uh, are debating this evening. Of course, it could have been £82 million more if the UK government matched the Scottish government investment. I'm very happy that the Parliament voted this evening uh, to reiterate its position that the uh, UK government should match that level of investment, with the exception of uh, the Conservative and Labour Party. But I won't uh, linger on that uh, too much uh, more. Um, as the Minister with responsibility for developing the young workforce, I do want to say a little bit about our progress in supporting schools, colleges and employers to, to widen choice and improve outcomes for young people. Of course, the, the headline achievement of that initiative, that programme, has been achieving the reduction in youth unemployment by 40% from 2014 levels by 2021 was the ambition. We achieved that four years Early, but of course we want to build on uh, that progress uh, and in terms of the, the Highlands and Islands uh, we, uh, it's critical that we continue uh, our long-term plan to uh, strengthen uh, education and skills partnerships between schools, uh, colleges, training providers and uh, employers based on the local uh, circumstances. And in that regard uh, I'm pleased to note the positive shift in perceptions of young people in uh, the area. I, I think that is undoubtedly down to a variety of factors, uh, of course, the fact that it is an outstanding part of the world to live in, but also the efforts that schools uh, and others are taking to uh, redesign and refocus their curriculum offer to better meet uh, employer and young people's needs. We, we spoke about the uh, issue of young people leaving 
uh, the, the Highlands and Islands. And of course, as uh, Gail Ross, Rodie Grant, uh, and John Finney and others made the point, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with young people uh, leaving any part of uh, the country they live in if that's what they aspire to do, if that's uh, an opportunity they want to take up. But all too often when I uh, visit areas, any part of uh, the, the country, but particularly rural communities, it's often because of a misperception that there are limited opportunities available on uh, the young person's own uh, doorstep. And we have to break down those misperceptions because that creates the idea that a young person has to leave uh, the area that they've grown up in. And that is not always uh, the case. Uh, I've seen that uh, happen on more than one occasion. I've been able to, through the Developing the Young Workforce uh, Initiative, uh, engage with young people who have actually taken up an opportunity that's on their doorstep and quite often it will be with an employer that's been there for generations that they did not know was based in their own uh, community. So that's why it's so uh, important to have employers involved in uh, the delivery of developing the young workforce and of course uh, we have 21 uh, industry-led regional groups, six of which are uh, in the Highlands and Islands, all working towards the same uh, aim, but of course being locally responsive to their own uh, local economic and skills uh, needs. Uh, and I, I've been very happy to visit uh, across uh, the country and to those groups in the Highlands and Islands. And I look forward to being able to return uh, again in uh, the, the future. Uh, I know, of course, that um, there are uh, particular challenges in supporting education and training opportunities in Scotland's rural communities in the Highlands and Islands. Of course, there have been uh, improvements. The University of Highlands and Islands has made uh, a system change in the delivery of higher education opportunities in the Highlands and Islands. Uh, E-School, which was mentioned by uh, John Finney and Donald Cameron, is also uh, an organisation I've had the privilege of, of visiting as well. It's a, a fantastic model for the delivery of education. But we do know that there are uh, barriers and additional costs in the delivery of employment and training. So that's one reason why for example, we've adapted our uh, modern apprenticeship system by the creation of a rural supplement, something of importance to the Highlands and Islands, a fund that supports training, employers, uh, training providers and employers overcome uh, barriers traditionally faced in rural areas in the delivery of modern apprenticeship opportunities. President officer, these are just some of the ways uh, through our DYW agenda, our skills system and our strategic economic investment, we are committed to supporting young people in the Highlands and Islands, and Gail Ross and other members can be assured of that ongoing commitment. That concludes the debate, and this meeting is closed. <laughs>